All right. Well, unfortunately, uh, Sam Ash is going out of business, and we went down there and we found this base. It's a five-string base. The headstock is broke off of it, and we're just gonna see what we can do about fixing it. So, anyways, we're gonna start by taking off the tuning pegs and the nut, and we're gonna just see how it fits together and go from there. All right. So we're gonna start off by taking off the nut. It's always safe to go ahead and trace around it to uh, make sure the paint, a lot of times the paint is stuck to it. And if you just go out and start taking it off, you can end up chipping it and making it look all ugly. So it's always good to just kind of trace around it. Usually it's a lot more easier to decide exactly where to cut, but here it's kind of so you get there, you also get on the edges. I just kind of push it down the side there along it with it. I get the edge right here. It's already starting to come loose just by doing this. I can hear it. And with this edge over here, it's gonna come loose already. And this edge right here. And then, uh, we have our tools for breaking the nut loose. Just give it a little love tap right here. And now we got the nut loose. And we're going to go ahead and start taking off the tuner pegs. All right, when you're done uh, getting it all out, you want to make sure you put it all in a bag or something so you don't lose it. It's very easy to lose parts. All right, our first goal is to figure out how we're going to pull it, glue it together seamlessly. Uh, usually we have issues right here at, at the tip, but we got to figure out how we're going to get it all the way back there. Right now, we have something obstructing it, not letting it come back all the way. So what we're going to do is flip it over and figure out exactly what it is. And it's usually this area right here and you can see this area right here. It's obstructing it all that because pretty much most of the rest isn't touching. So what we're going to do is clean up this area. That area is usually kind of hard so we're going to start off probably cleaning it with a wire brush. Hopefully that'll get everything out of our way you want to do that on that piece and this piece what that does too is all those little stray pieces of uh, wood or the fibers break some loose because all that all that stuff is creating space in your way see like these pieces we're gonna go through and make sure we get all of that out of the way what we're going to do also is on this side, probably some splinters in here leaning up that way that maybe we should kind of push out of our way. Maybe even brush it. Now let's see how that fits together. You can tell it's still not quite right. Let's see what it looks like on the other side. We're getting there. It looks better, but you can tell by looking here, see, it still needs to come down. Of course, here you can tell. So, most likely your issue is still right here. We're getting a little close here, so we might want to start looking over here. But uh, look at that, it's starting to fit good enough to hold. The way I'm gonna do that is, uh, Go ahead and try and cut it out right there. There, and that piece right there. Put that with the brush. The reason I don't have this taped off is uh, as far as when we're done gluing it, 
We're gonna use a, a black CA glue to camouflage all the pieces that, uh, that we have. I don't know if you noticed or I forgot to mention, but there's paint chips missing. And uh, we're gonna have to try and make that look better. So I'm cleaning around in here more too, just to make sure there's nothing in there. Let's make sure there's nothing over here. See this right here? That little piece of wood, that, that's a little obstruction. Let's get that out of the way. I'm gonna try and cut some of this. This is the part, this side has to tuck under, let's see, under this part right here. And, uh, you know, since that's chipped, I was gonna cut that. Since that's chipped, it's fitting under there easy. Let's look at this piece here. And this piece is gonna be fitting in under here. And that's kind of tight, so. I'm gonna cut that right there. Let's flip it over and see what it looks like. Yeah, that right there. All right, let's see how that fits now. I think we're there. <clears throat> now we still got a little bit to go. We, we are better. I wonder if that's paint chip missing. Now you can fill it over here. We, we, we can still uh, go in a little further. Let's figure out what's causing that. Look right there, I bet you that's causing it. Let's look for anything else. Yeah, let's, let's work on this area right here. Clean it up right here. See this piece too? That piece is breaking loose. Let's go ahead and pull that out. And who was that spot again? It was right here. So let's put that over. I'm just gonna shave it. I'm gonna support it with my fingers so I don't break the paint. And I see a little channel in there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of clean that a little too. Let's see, the thing is with the short breaks like this, a lot of people like to use the rubber band to tighten it but it, it can move on you. So I clean it up as good as I can. You just want to make sure it's, because you don't want it moving. Once, once you get it all clamped and glued, you can't see what's going on under there, but that looks pretty good there. Yeah, there we go. Let's turn it over. See what it looks like on this side. There we go. I think that's as good as it's gonna get. So next we gotta figure out exactly, like I said, in, on these short breaks, I, I try to avoid using the rubber band method. Look there, something going, oh wow. Holy cow. We got tape under there. All right, we're ready to glue our joints together. This is a jig that I made. I made it with another jig that I used to cut my scarf joints with. Um, so anyways, this is our test run. We've got our sheet of uh, wax paper. We aren't gonna need it on this side. Um, so anyways, let's go ahead and take it back apart and get it ready to glue. So just to be safe, I've learned it's best if you have put it together, go ahead and clean it again something could have moved and look around just to be safe i also have my wet rag ready so when i am done gluing i can wipe all the excess away all right here we go get a little on here i'm not going to get any in that area where the the binding is 
I'm, I'm hoping to uh, take care of that just in case it's a little loose. I'm hoping to take care of that after the case. We'll see how it goes when it comes together. So anyways, I'm gonna get it both sides with glue. Alright, well, put this on there. We go, we go, we go. Get our wipe some of that off. Get our wax paper on there. Now, just to be safe, I'm gonna give this a little blow top on here. A lot of people will let it set for four or six hours and then I go ahead and pick it loose. I'm gonna go ahead and let it set for at least 12 hours. I probably won't pick it back off till this time tomorrow and uh, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, here we are 24 hours later, or about that, and I feel like I should go over a couple things. Uh, number one, um, when I use this clamp, uh, you'll notice that I don't have much of a padding underneath it. That's because on this type of brake, when you squeeze it too much, you'll actually squeeze it out. Um, so you just gotta be careful with how much pressure you use and in, in, in that case you're not using enough to create crush or crushing on the wood and also I did not use the rubber band type uh, uh, repair because once again when you use it on a, a repair like this uh, you can't see what's going on and, and this type of repair slips real easy and that's another reason why I like this You can see everything that's going on. I like using the rubber band a lot But only on bigger brakes uh, where you don't have to worry about it moving as much um, So let's go ahead and take it apart it Looks like it came out real good, but we'll know more when we look at the other side Because this side obviously looks, it came out great Nothing wrong over here this side heck yeah that came out real good nice and flush so when we come back what we're gonna start off with is that we're gonna dye this area black and then we're also gonna use a a black CA glue to kind of camouflage all this area and make it look like the rest see what we can do to make it look like it didn't happen before we add the coloring to it I forgot to mention we need to get the excess glue off that, that dried underneath and all I did was uh, use a, a warm wet rag and set it on there for about five minutes and it just peels right off um, we may have to do it a second time let's see usually that'll get it good enough let me think we're good let's pick that a little I want to get it down back to the wood just because the for the outside uh, the CA the black CA glue that we're gonna use will polish up nice all right so we've got a little change of plans it turns out if we do this video all in one it's gonna be way too long over 30 minutes so we've decided to break it into two uh, we're gonna have the neck repair as one and then the finishing with the clear coat as a second video So what we want to do is go ahead and show you how good the 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 repair came out came out beautiful uh, All the way up here. It came out awesome up here. We have a little bit of movement I'm thinking that's because maybe the neck broke that way because everything else came out so awesome all the way up to right here so I'm thinking that's just the way that the neck bent the wood as it broke over So um, also so you can see the repair up here. You're gonna see, if you want to see the finishing of it uh, We're gonna like I said, we're gonna have it in the 
next part of the video we have it up to here to this point um, I just wanted to show you that so if you want to see the ending of this video it'll be up next week and please like and subscribe